Behind the scenes, and when I have time, I have been clearing our property, and I've had to take down a lot of little trees. As you can see, we have a stack of wood right there. I've done all that work with this, my reciprocating saw. It's been super handy. We've been using reciprocating saws to cut trees for a few years now, and it works awesome, sometimes better than a chainsaw. Uh, I have a pruning blade on there right now, and it's made for trees. It's got a nice thick teeth on there. Anyway, we power through all kinds of stuff. And I like this because I can get down in the dirt, in the roots, I can get anywhere I need to get. A chainsaw, you ruin the blade instantly, so I like using this. Problem is, sometimes I run into trees that are too big for my saw. For example, we have this uprooted tree in our backyard, and it's been in our way pretty much since we cleared this space in our yard. And I want it out of here. You can see, it just goes on and on forever here. And it's about 15 inches in diameter at its widest part here. And honestly, it doesn't taper very much. So it's a pretty hefty tree. I was searching around for a chainsaw. I thought about buying one. Then I thought, maybe I can use the reciprocating saw. Let's get this out of the way here, whatever it is. We have to prepare the body. For operation. Yep. I'm going to try to cut the trunk as close to the root base as we can. We just want to get the log out of here. Uh, I think we need more fill dirt back here too. We might have to order some more. So once this is out of here, we'll be able to work a lot easier. Don't you think it'd be cool to raise this spot up? Yeah, I think it needs some more. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you going to time me? See how long this takes? Yeah, it's working good, actually. <laughs> But I think this is going to be a little slow. I wish they made a bigger blade for this. They do. Well guys, I picked up an 18 inch saw blade. We're going to try this out. Well, I'm still working at it. We're getting there. We're a little over halfway. The batteries are a problem. I keep going dead. They don't like to be overheated and overworked. This one's showing two bars, but it keeps quitting on me. 
But I developed a technique that's working really good. It's called the double cutting action. So while I'm cutting, I'm also sawing like this. So while cutting, I'm sawing. And what it does is it keeps the blade clear of sawdust. It helps pull the sawdust out and it's keeping the cut going a lot quicker. It only smells slightly burnt. Should be fine. If this breaks, it would have been cheaper to just buy the chainsaw. Yeah. And just get it Instead done with. Instead of the blade. Instead of a blade and a new reciprocating saw. I can't believe I just did that. Yeah, who cares, give up. Did you guys just see that? I didn't even know I was that close. I was in the zone, just cutting. The log collapses. I just cut through this massive trunk. I'm getting distracted here. I got all these sticky seeds all over my legs and I keep feeling them rubbing on me. They're literally in my pants rubbing on my legs. Anyway, check this out. The massive blade did it. I just cut through this huge tree with a reciprocating saw and it only took me maybe four days of cutting. <laughs> literally, I've been cutting on this for probably four days. Problem is, when you're using a battery power tool continuously, it just drains those batteries so fast. So I go through a battery, I put it on the charger, I'm done for the day, I don't worry about it. I come back, I do it again. I don't know if it was four or five charges, maybe more, I have no idea, but we cut through there. And I know what you're gonna say, Doug. Work smarter, not harder. Why don't you just buy a chainsaw? Maybe someday I will. I just, I like to challenge myself. And I actually feel really good. This this is so much more sense of accomplishment than buying a chainsaw. So that's awesome. I can't believe I did that. Especially with a blade that's actually meant for brick and block. Yep, this blade is made for cutting through bricks. And I cut through a tree. Carbide tipped, it's the same difference. Trees, blocks, it's all the same. We had some big rains back here, so the ground is very wet. We're gonna be hauling in more sand. You guys know that we brought in 20 loads maybe of sand. It's filled dirt, but we're gonna get more and put it back here. You wanna see the water? You see it standing back here in pools? That blade cost quite a bit of money, but less than a chainsaw, and I was able to accomplish what I wanted, which was cutting the roots off of this trunk. And now I gotta move this trunk. Now. I could cut it into sections. It looks like it's about 30 or 40 feet long. I would love to cut it up, but that would take me another couple of weeks probably to cut it up into pieces. So I think what I'm gonna do is get the excavator out here and roll it out of my way so we can finally clean up back here and fill and level this area, which is going to be, I think, where Ashley's gonna plant fruit trees in the future, we'll see. So I think the roots, the root, mound here is going to be near impossible for the excavator to move but i do feel like we can move the trunk i don't know what i'm doing with that let's get the excavator and just see what happens but i am i'm still just so excited when that fell i i literally wasn't expecting it because picture working on the same project for like four days in a row and you're just like 
All of a sudden it just falls down, so it's kind of... Anyway, enough blabbing, let's get the excavator and see if it can move a huge, huge log. I think I'm just going to push it into the neighbor's property. But don't worry, he did give us permission. He said that we could throw stuff over there if we don't want it, and he'll clean it up later because he's going he's gonna to have some equipment back here eventually. This is going to be a cold start on a John Deere 26G. Okay, I'm just, I'm going to try to give you a perspective of how long this log is. That is 40 feet long. I was close. My feet do measure a foot my shoes. So 40 feet long, 16 and a half inches wide, about 16 inches wide, 16 inches thick. Check that out. They can lift it with ease.
Now there's a frog right where the snake was. Now we gotta get him out of the way. <laughs> a stink! This bush here, this is American Beauty Berry. Really pretty color. This is where you guys started when I lifted that log and look at what a difference it makes. We're just gaining so much space in our yard. And I like to see that. It feels good to open it up and finally get that log out of the way. That was a tree that fell shortly after we moved in. So for a year, this has kind of been off limits. As you guys can see, it has a lot of wildlife in it and we like that, but at the same time, it's probably better to clear it out so that we don't have snakes and things where the kids are playing and we have more usable space. But I want to point out something. This, do you remember this? This right here is our yard. That's our original yard. So there's no fill dirt here. And I want you to notice the difference between this wet, muddy mess. And now compare it to our yard, which has all fill dirt in it. And it doesn't even take that much. Some spots are thick, some spots are thin, but it's all fill dirt. And even where I drive through here heavily with the excavator, it's not muddy, it's just torn up. We've had tons and tons of rain. It's, it's damp, but it's clean. It's not that muddy mess. So we have had people asking us, how is the sand holding up? Is it working? It's awesome. It has transformed the yard and that's why I wanna get more of it to put back here because this muddy mess that you see back here, it literally can look like this. The water will still be down there, but it firms it up and the most important thing is it's not mud and I can drive on top of it. We also have an answer to another question that we've been getting and that's about our roof. Hasn't been done yet. It's holding up great. The underlayment looks perfect, not leaking, but we were finally able to order our roofing materials and it's here. So here is our roof. We chose a white metal roof and this roof is actually called PBR Metal Roofing. This is an exposed fastener roofing, but it's more of a commercial style roofing rather than the common residential one you'd see. So the ribs are bigger and they're spaced out differently. The reason we got this is because first, we have some very low slope pitches. So this is the only one that was rated for a one in 12 pitch. And that's because of those high ribs when they overlap, the water has a really hard time getting in that roof, even on a low slope. So we got that for the whole roof. Another cool thing about this is it's a heavier gauge than the standard roofing. So it's a little more durable. It's not gonna get dented if anything falls on it. Now nothing should be falling on it, but you know, it's stronger. I want to get the roof on as soon as possible. I know you guys would love to see it done, but we might be a little slow on it. I ordered this because I felt a sense of urgency to get it done. But the problem is that we're hitting this really rainy streak. It's gonna be raining every day and I don't wanna I don't want to get part of the roof up and have rain getting underneath it. I'd rather wait until we have at least a couple days of no rain. 
I don't like leaving it stacked. I know you shouldn't leave it stacked out here in the weather because uh, water can get between the sheets and all that, but I think it's going to be fine even if we have to leave it a few weeks, a couple weeks, who knows. That's where we're at. The, uh, the bus is still broken down, but the parts should be shipping today. That's taking longer than I expected. But uh, other than that, everything's fine. We're just at a standstill. Not much going on. Are you getting tired from doing all those push-ups? I'm getting straight. <laughs> well guys, I guess that's all we have for today. That's the update. So for now, thanks for watching and until next time, take care.